before tonight, no one had ever had 24 assists and 21 rebounds in a game in the NBA history. Um, what can you say about the way Russell Westbrook played tonight? Well, he's, he's amazing. I mean, there's not enough. I mean, everybody's described him in so many different ways. I've been fortunate to see him for eight years do a lot of things that are pretty much superhuman at times. Point guards don't do what he does. He's no, they're not built that way. They're, there might be some that can probably shoot better. There might be some that probably can do a certain things better, but there's nobody in the history of the game that can do what he does throughout the stat sheet. I used to always say he's going to probably go down as the third best point guard ever, but I think he's past one and he's going to go down as probably the second best. And one is obviously magic. He's gonna what he does. There's no point guard has ever done it. Nobody. Nobody. And for him to average four triple doubles in five years, what Oscar said about him was to me, that was real. He's doing MVP type things every game. And he's an MVP winner every night on on the floor and off the floor. But if he was selfish, he would have had a 20, 20, 20 game. But he was very comfortable only shooting three shots at halftime. Not a, lot of, not a lot of star players in this league are comfortable only taking three shots at halftime. But, you know, I, you guys know how I feel about him. And, and it's not because I think he's a cool dude and a, and a great family. That's a big part of it. But I see what he does every day. I see what he does every day. To our, to our group, to our locker room, to all of our young guys. It's not easy coaching young guys, and that's what he does. We're lucky we got two really high-level leaders in Brad and Russell to help those young guys develop and still want to, you know, win games along the way. And we don't believe in rebuild. We fought through a lot. And, but the guys uh, the guy's going to go down as, you know, one of the biggest winners in the game. And that position, what he's just done is – you can critique them all you want, but you, you, the guys that, guys that matter to me. I mean, that guy is, is as high, high as a level as a player in this league has ever seen. And how important was it to get the tiebreaker over Indiana, knowing where you guys are on the standings? Well, I mean, it's a big. It was a big game. We've tried to focus on. I've always coached that way. Just every game is a big game. We got. In a normal season, you have 82 tests, and you either you either get an A or you get an F, and that's how I've always been that way. And you f focus on the next game. You know that's the great thing about sport. You get to find out the results right away. You know you don't have to wait. You know a couple of days to to get your grade. You you know right away. Some of you probably didn't do too well in your SAT, but you know you got to wait some time to get that score. You know, Irvine's hard to get in. It's hard to get in, but I had to wait a couple of weeks to get that. It wasn't on because I was a basketball player. I was, an, I was a student. Ava and I. Go ahead, Ava. Maybe DA. I, I failed my SAT, so that's how I ended up here. Um, Scott, I, Russ the other night was talking about fit and just how – the organization was really willing and all the guys in the locker room were really willing to let him be himself. Um, did you know when he arrived here, did you have a sense, I guess, that the guys needed somebody like him or would be willing to accept his leadership style? Um, just wondering about fit. Cause you don't always know with a trade like that. Well, I knew, I knew he would bring a winning competitive toughness edge to our team and we're going to need, need that. And we needed that, but he just brings a winning spirit. It's unfortunate our fans, well, at least now we get 2,100 fans that get to see it. What's really amazing is that before the game, he goes, runs down to the end of the court and, and looks at the crowd and gets them all pumped up. And you can see the connection. Each fan, each fan thinks he's doing it for him. And he is. Russell loves the game, and he competes, and he, he loves to play for the fans, even on the road. I mean, you see on the road, I've been – he gets – 
he gets those fans riled up and certain fans, certain places say things that are very inappropriate, but for the most part, they get, they get him, they get him fired up. But I knew when we acquired him that he was going to help. And the thing that I, when I talked to him, he knew that Brad's the best player on this team and Brad is going to keep leading this team. And he was going to help Brad along the way. Cause we, it's hard. It's hard. You know, Brad, what's Brad done in the last three years without, um, you know, with John being hurt and he was, you know, we made that pivot when we knew that we were going to have uh, more him for a while that Brad had to lead a lot of these young guys. That's hard. That's hard. He did a great, a good job doing it, but now he has, uh, now he has a partner to do it. And Russell's not, he's never like I've said, you know, he's only had problems with maybe a few teammates that didn't want to play hard. And those are the ones that are talking. Those are the ones that tell you this, Hey, make sure you don't put my name in the article. But bottom line is those are the ones you shouldn't give any credit. You shouldn't even talk to those guys because those are the ones that never played hard. Those are the ones that are just stealing money. They just wanted to check. Russell doesn't, Russell doesn't get along with anybody that doesn't compete. And you don't have to be an all-star talent. All you got to do is just play hard. Play hard. They, they, we have guys that just play hard. He likes all of our guys. Fred? Scott, you, you've seen Russell play so many games. And there are some nights where he comes out and, and, and he's going to put up 20, 23, 25 shots. And there are other nights where tonight where he'll just pick apart teams with, with his passing. What are the triggers that you notice, okay, this is going to be a night where he's coming out and he's facilitating to, to a degree this extreme? Well, I mean, he does, like I said, he does so many, he does so many things, but he doesn't, he doesn't go into the game thinking, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to manipulate the game. He just go, the game tells him what he's, what he, what needs to be done. And a lot of, a lot of guys, you know, a lot of guys can't do that because they got to really just stick to doing what they do. Great. He does so many things well. And he, I mean, I thought he, he had a chance for, you know, 30 assists. He had a couple of, bunnies that dropped in and out of the hand and he probably put too much too much sauce on him where our bigs couldn't catch it it wasn't the bigs fault it was his fault but he's you know he could do other things than just score he can do other things just pass and rebound he does a little bit of everything and that's what makes him a special player he rebounds offensive rebounds he gets to the free throw line uh he passes he knows he knows when to foul he has gets deflections, gets steals. He's even a high-level turnover guy. And and Scott, on the on the whole tonight, high level turnover guy. On the on the on the night you guys had 50 assists, which was a franchise record. You're the first team to have 50 assists in a game in 30 years. Um, it wasn't just Russell moving the ball. You got 20, what is it, 26 other assists from the rest of the guys. What was working so well with you guys for ball movement on the whole tonight? More well, three guard lineup. And that's another good thing about Brad. Brad's a Brad's a playmaker. I mean, it's like he had. We didn't even talk about Brad. What he does, you know, he missed a couple of shots that he would normally make, but he's just steady. He's steady. He just plays the right way. He had six assists. Our three guard lineup had, you know, another. Uh, Raul had eight assists. Ish came in and and created some opportunities for for scoring opportunities for himself and his teammates. But we got. We got a good team, you know. We we've been playing well, pretty well, and we we play hard. And tonight, I mean, they they put so many little lineups out there, and it was hard. And and the way they move the ball and attack, it's both teams were scoring. But when you have that little lineup, it's hard for you to get stops as well. And that's what you know. We put up a uh, 154 points, but we gave up 141. We're not happy with that, and we're gonna have to play much better on this road trip. Road trip's gonna be hard. We're playing against five teams that are competing for playoff um, position or play getting competing for their playoff life. So we got to, we're going to have to play well on this trip It's definitely going to be a tough trip, but we're looking forward to going out and, and, and taking care of each game is, and not focus on the next game. Yeah. Scott, uh, you are resident uh, Russell file uh, in the, in the building, how would you say his game has kind of 
the numbers seem to still be the same, but how do you think his game has it's changed, if at all, over the eight years you've seen him? Well, he's he plays with he still plays with that intensity of like it's game, you know, game seven. He's always he doesn't that's not going to change. The only thing that's changed now, and and I'm and I've forced that change, and he's he's a lot. You know, he's wise. He knows. He knows. He knows. But is is that I don't tell him to practice much. And, you know, this year with all the games, you you really can't. And we haven't. We haven't practiced with the whole team in in months. I mean, I'm maybe even three months. And it's it's hard. It's hard to play all the games and travel. You know, I, you know, coming home last night and get the, or two nights ago, I didn't get to bed till almost six o'clock in the morning. I'm, so it's just a lot a lot to ask all the guys and then the practice, but that's the only thing that he has changed. He doesn't practice um, like he used to. Those practices that we had when we had all those young guys and we split them up to make it really edgy and really the, raise the intensity level up. It was, it was two and a half hour practices then shoot arounds were an hour and 15 minutes and they were, it was live and it was crazy, mm -hmm. but that's how, that's how you get better. You can't run you can't run from work. If you run from work, you're not going to get better in this league. You got to, you got to embrace it and challenge it. But he, that's the only thing that's changed. I mean, really, he, that's the only thing. I mean, obviously he's gotten better because he's, he's seen so much and he's experienced so much. And then he also gotten better with the, just the mental aspect of it. If he has a bad game and he knows that, you know, that's going to happen and you just have to keep playing forward and do the right things on, on, enough that you're going to, Things are going to turn for you, but he, he's the only thing he's changed. He doesn't practice. Thank you, sir. Zach. Hey, coach. Uh, what do you think about the chemistry that's developed between Russell and Rui? Uh, it's good. That's good. He's challenges Rui. That's what I love. Rui's a Rui's Rui's a, a de another developing player that's going to continue to chip away of improvement and its and its levels. You can do it at your pace. Or you can do it at the pace we want, and I think he does it at the pace we want. He and Russell helps that pace move along. Rui's a, one of the one of the great like young pros. How he just focuses on doing his job, really meticulous in his work. But the one thing that Russell is is helping him along is like this competition is is the is the every night is that every night, and it really has been really good, but I think Russell has helped them even get a little bit better, just bringing that intensity and that that grit, that edge that he needs. And I, and obviously they have this, you know, this um, chemistry up top of the key. When teams have trouble, you're going to switch on Russell with the bigger guy. You're going to switch on Russell with the, or Rui with the smaller guy. And Russell finds them and Rui shoots over him, which is a pretty – it's almost a pretty consistent shot that we can get out of that play. Thank you. Matt. Hey, Scott. Um, you know, you've been obviously around Russell for a long time. I was just wondering, when did you come to the conclusion that, you know, he was your number two point guard of all time behind Magic? Was that something this season? Is this something well, I just know what he's doing. I mean, what he's done, even when the years I wasn't with him, what he's done, he's just, you do it in order to get, I mean, my list means Jack. I mean, I just my list. I mean, it's not. Nobody else's. It's just mine. I've seen enough guards, and I played against enough guards. And Magic is unique in his own. He's six nine, and he's fast. He's and he's developed. I mean, he sees the court. But you know, what what Russell has done is pretty incredible, and it's and he's done it for thirteen years, even his rookie year, not really knowing knowing the position as well as he knows it now, and being with all all young guys. We had all young guys, and. Yeah, I mean, that's – it was fun, but there was nights it wasn't so fun when you're 3 and 29 and and you're you're coaching a bunch of young guys. And that's why I look the way I look. And, and I'm curious, you know, there are some players throughout history that are just linked to a player, Michael LeBron, even Kobe, and Michael Jordan. Um, with Russell, it's Oscar Robinson, you know, all the triple doubles. What do you think it says about him that – it's so particularly linked to one player and with the record coming up to just maybe the, the fair connection that they have. Well, I've obviously, I mean, a legend, 
talks about you in the way that Oscar, you know, talked about him. That to me, that's that's huge. I'm not saying you have to play the game to know the game, but you know, there's certain there's certain things that you can't you can't really feel it if you haven't played it. I mean, you can look, watch it all you want, but if there's certain things. I'm not saying there's it's a big part of it, but there's a little part of it. But when Oscar said those things, that was to me that was that's pretty cool. That I mean, this, this, Oscar's a legend, and that's unfortunate that and and I get on my son all the time. He thinks he, he thinks the NBA started in 2000, and I get on him all the time, and he's dead serious. I can't even I don't even like to argue with him. It's it's annoying. He doesn't even think, but you know, I'm sure. You know, my friends, parents were probably saying the same thing. That I thought the NBA started with, you know, right after Michigan State played Indiana, you know, 79. I thought that's when it started. But the NBA started in, when was it, 46. And there's a lot of amazing players that worked their tails off to make this league great. And I'm proud and honored, and it's a privilege to do what I do and play in it and coach in it. But yeah, I man, these Oscar is a legend, and it's unfortunate that we don't get to hear from him more and and watch more film about him and documentaries about him and, and Jabbar and Julius Irving, my favorite player growing up. I mean, we won on his birthday this year, February twenty second. Uh, but yeah, there's Oscar saying those great things about him is amazing. All right, we'll finish with a quick one, to Ava. It is quick, Scott. Um, I know it's because Denny's out, but um, what have you seen out of Ch uh, Chandler that's allowed him to keep those consistent minutes? Yeah, you know, I love, there's a play in that, I think it was that second quarter. He ran the lane, left side, as hard as I've seen anybody run that lane. And that's, he's going to get rewarded. That's what we want. We need uh, lane runners, not ball watchers. We need to run. And when he gets a rebound, he has to find it to our guards and run. Uh, we don't need him to make two dribbles and then pass. He needs to run. I thought he ran and got Russell got a back door. But by him running, it allows if he would have missed that layup, Gaff would have got the tip then. If he would, if Russell didn't pass him that and adapt it, it probably DB got the right side three. But that's how you that's how you play consistent minutes by playing with maximum effort. And he's going to learn a lot of things. He hasn't played a lot, and, and he's still young, and he's missed a lot of this season. But he's he's getting minutes, and he deserves them. He's going to chip away at them. And some some moments, he's going to look really good. And then some moments, you're going to say, oh, you're going to scratch your head. But at least we're going to watch some film with them. And Tony's done a great job of working with them, Coach Brown. And we're going to have to keep, keep building him up. He's a – like I said, he hasn't played much this year. But what he does – it's really valuable to what we need to do. You know, I feel like whatever he does, you know, it makes it easier for us, um, especially me, uh, all the young guys, you know, uh, we can run the court, you know, he likes to, he likes to fight, you know, fast space, uh, pace and then, you know, all that. So yeah, it's, it just makes it easier. And then, you know, that's what he's been doing. And then, you know, we start, you know, you guys see like, we start playing together more and then, you know, so you can see like we have more chemistry. So like, you know, it's so it looks so easy to like score or like, you know, anything. Yeah. Neil. Hey Rui. Um you guys had 50 assists tonight. Russ a couple games ago, he said everybody eats. What is the feeling and you know, just mood in the locker room right now with the street that you guys have been on? Say that again, please. You guys had 50 assists. Plus that everybody eats, you know, ball is moving around a lot. What is just the mood that you guys are on this streak right now? Um, you know, it just um just so we're trying to make it playoffs, you know, right now. And then, uh, you know, we lost a uh tough one last game. So we have to, you know, we have to come back with a good energy tonight. And then I think we did a good, you know, defense brief. Uh, we had a we had a lot of mistakes, but the offense side, we you know we almost uh, scored 160. Um, you know, it's very good, you know. But we we still don't know. Yeah, so we just gotta keep rolling, you know. And then uh, every game is very important for us. So yeah, we just got locked in. 
Christos. Congratulations on the win. Speaking for us, is there anything that surprising you anymore or anything that impressed you most on his game? Surprising what? Hmm? Are, is there anything that surprising you on his game? Oh, you know, um, I feel like, you know, like it's crazy. Like, you know, he's a point guard, but he can do everything. Literally, like, you know, rebounds. He, like, we, it's 20 rebounds is like, you know, it's not normal, you know. <laughs> It's not like a normal player can do like that. So, and he always like that's like he he does every games, you know. I think that's the most important. I mean, interesting, you know. He he gets triple double, but like he does like consistent like every game, like you know, 20, 20, 20 points, ten rebounds, and ten assists, like you know. And it looks so easy, you know. It's not like a force in anything. So, you know, it's I don't know. I don't know how how he's been doing that, but yeah, I think that's the most. I feel like. Yeah, surprising thing. Brianna. Hey, Rui. I'm just wondering for um, for you, like, is your family here? Are they seeing you playing at the arena? Are they watching? I mean, what has been their response of this season so far? Um, they were actually here a couple of weeks ago. Uh, they left already, but yeah, um, they love it. Yeah, they love the. They really love the team. Um, Especially, um, you know, my mom. Um, they always in Japan. Like you know, when we play, it's like a five a.m., six a.m. or something. So, but they always wake up and then watching my games and my dad, uh, my grandma, and everybody watching my game every game. So, you know, it's a, you know, it's been great. You know, we just, you know, they, they, you know, they excited to come to us and you know um it's just like you know watching the game every day here so yeah hopefully we can do that next year and yeah but yeah first of all you guys uh, were able to secure the tiebreaker against indiana a team that's right ahead of you uh, how important was it to get that uh very important especially um position that we're in and position they're in um i believe that it was uh, a must win game for us um, and we all understood that and you tonight um, had 24 assists and 21 rebounds. No one in NBA history has ever done that before. Um, what what led to this for you, and, and what's your reaction to that? Well, you know, um, I am very grateful and thankful and uh, to be able to go out and, and compete and, and, you know, have my imprint on the game. And, um each night I try to figure out ways to be able to impact winning and impact my team. And uh, tonight was one of those nights where um, certain things are rolling, guys are rolling, and my job is to be able to find them. Um, and as a point guard and as playing this position, uh, you got to be able to make somebody around you better. And I feel like I um, take a lot of pride and effort and energy and, and time and watching film and uh, to be able to make others around me better. Um, that's that. Fred. Russ, you've, you've talked about legacy in regards to off the court so much this year, but, but an inextricable part of your legacy is obviously just going to be so many just coming up in so many of these historical stats, like the one tonight, the 20 rebound, 20, 20 assists. Is that, is that something that you think about? Is that something that, that matters to you that you care about? Um, I don't think about it. Um, I actually just go out and have fun and hoop, you know, and, um, uh... At the end of the day, when my, my journey is done and I'm done playing basketball, I can look back and, and think about some of the crazy stat lines, the good, the bad, the ugly, um, and be thankful. I'm thankful for it all. I'm, I'm grateful. Um, and I stay prayerful and, and constantly uh, just keep my head down and keep going regardless of um, anything that's a negative energy around. And I just like to have fun and go out and compete. And that's what I do, you know, and um, nights like tonight, um, you know, it's, you got to thank all of my teammates and coaches because they they make my job easy. They make they allow me to be able to do the things I'm able to do uh, on the basketball court. And I'm grateful uh, to be able to have uh, such amazing guys and staff to be able to do that. And, um, you know. Ava. Russ, obviously, as you know, assists can be um, kind of a tricky one because you need your other teammates to do their job. Um, how have you seen this t 
team kind of grow um, over the season or where have you seen it grow the most? Um, just being in the right spots, you know, as, a, as, a, as we kind of obviously when I got here, I was trying to find ways to be able to make the game easy for everybody and um, especially Brad and make it easy for him so I can, uh, you know, make the game easy for people around him. Um, and as we kind of got along this season, guys are doing a better job of just running the floor, spacing out. Um, and my job is to be able to create uh, and make it easy for them. And uh, to be honest, I mean, I, I just, me personally, I feel like I am the best, you know, playmaker in this league um, because I'm able to do things that um, I don't think nobody else can do. Um, and I take pride in playmaking and, and passing and, and making my teammates better. And, um, you know, I'm grateful to have a bunch of teammates that uh, make my job so much easier. Neil. Hey, Russ, you've told us so much this season about, you know, you look and see what does your team need from you on a given night? How early in the game are you seeing, okay, I'm really getting, you know, assists, assists, assists. I don't need to score. I don't need to shoot the ball. Where does that come from? Uh, the game will tell you what to do. Uh, that's how I feel. I mean, I've always played the game like that. The game will tell you what to do. Um, if I need to be aggressive and score, I can do that. Uh, if I need to rebound, I can do that, score. Um, like I've said before, uh, and that's just what I believe. The game will always tell you exactly what you need to do, and that's kind of how I operate. Matt. Yeah, I was following up on that. You know, is that something that took time for you to learn, or is that something that – how did that kind of progress as you've gone along uh, here of getting used to, to each that? Each year I try to come back a better player or something. Um, each season I, I take pride in becoming a better player each and every year that I'm in this league. Um, so each year uh, at the end of the season, I watch film, I study, um, I learn myself, learn the game um, and find ways that how, how I can impact winning. Um, sometimes the season may not end the way that I may have wanted it, but um, along my journey and along the seasons, if I felt like I made somebody else better on the side of me, um, I, I feel like I've done, uh, you know, my part in my, in my, my duty. So each year, um, it definitely takes time. Um, I've learned and, and understood how to be able to play the game at a different level of pace and still be effective while doing it. And then I'm just curious, like as a kid, did you ever make lists of like, you know, who are the best point guards of all time and that sort of stuff? No, I made lists of football players. I wanted to be an NFL player. <laughs> Actually, who's your greatest player? Do you have one? Greatest what? F football player. Greatest football player? Yeah. Uh, I don't have a greatest, but my team is the Dallas Cowboys. Gotcha. <laughs> oh, all right, thanks. Yeah. Uh, you, Russ, you mentioned uh, you want to come back a better player every year. How much were you able to do after last season, you know, with the injury and everything? Uh, not a lot, you know. Um, I think, you know, at the end of the last season, obviously there were a lot of conversations about if I can play or not, but like everyone know, I was, my, my quad was torn. Um, and then unfortunately, at the start of this season, I tore my other one, um, but I was playing through it and still trying to compete for my guys and had an opportunity to kind of rest and, um, you know, be ready to go um, and with my rest and proper treatment and the staff here being able to kind of take care of that allows me to kind of be at a level and the pace where I know that I can play at um, mm -hmm. consistent on night and at our bases and um, you know I'm at a good position health wise and especially mentally wise. Was there was there anything that that the medical staff came up with this year in terms of um, you know program or, or different Stretching exercises, anything that kind of has helped you get through the season? <laughs> no, no, nothing different. Same thing um, that I've done in the past. Um, you know, as, as you get older, you and there's so many different things, DA in this league, and that you learn and studies and all this stuff that that can help you. You know, preserve your years. Um, obviously, I take all those in consideration, but um, at the same time, I just kind of do and try to be as consistent as possible, so I know my body very well and know how my body's going to react to certain treatment and uh, try to make sure that I'm the best I can be for my teammates every night. All right, a couple more quick ones, Chase. Russ, uh, speaking of all-time lists, um, Scott Brooks said he's moved you up to number two. Uh, all-time point guards, the only guy he thinks was better than you is Magic Johnson, which is probably fair. Uh, just what's your reaction to your coach saying that? I mean, that's, uh, uh, you know, it's, I'm, I'm grateful for somebody like Scotty, uh, not just a coach, but a friend. 
uh, because he's always number one. He's gave me the first opportunity to be able to to go out and uh, you know be me, and he's always allowed me to do that since day one. And uh, we've always stayed close and um, communicated throughout the years, the seasons, and to be back with him, um, you know, it's, 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 I'm, I'm very grateful and thankful for him and his his ability to be able to allow me to go out and just play and compete and his trust in me um, to be the point guard of this team and go out and play. So I'm, I'm thankful for that.